In this video, you will learn three safe and effective exercises for L5-S1 disc herniations. These three exercises are also good for L4, L5 disc herniations. These exercises can be done at home. They require no equipment, and all three of them have been shown to be effective for lowering the back pain, buttock pain, and or leg pain that is often associated with L5-S1 disc herniations. These exercises are especially helpful for people who have severe pain due to an L5-S1 disc herniation. You will learn how to do these exercises without making the L5-S1 disc bulge or associated back or leg pain worse. These three exercises follow a sequence. The first two are done lying down, and then if you're able to do those exercises and get some relief, we can progress to the third exercise, which is seated, and it will also incorporate breath work in a way that we will teach you how to distract your spine to take pressure off of the discs, particularly the L5-S1 disc, especially if it is herniated. These three exercises promote movement and mobility in your spine. Movement is so important because active movement acts like a pumping mechanism in and around that disc that is bulged. That is critical to flush out waste products and bring in new blood and nutrition in order to let that disc heal. Without proper movement and mobility, your tissues will break down at a much faster rate. Not only am I gonna show you these three exercises for L5-S1 disc herniations, but if you watch to the end, I will throw in a bonus sequence of exercises that can further promote health and healing movement and mobility in your lower back. Together, these are all specifically designed to relieve pressure on the herniated disc. Be sure you watch right to the end of this video so that you do not miss the bonus exercise. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Dupuy, a corrective chiropractor in Sanford, Maine. This channel is dedicated to providing you information on enhancing your posture and spinal health so that way you can feel better, move better, perform better, and overall have improved health. Before I dive in, take a moment to subscribe to this channel now if you want to enhance your posture, improve your spinal health so you can feel better, move better, perform better, and be healthier overall. These three exercises I'm about to show you have literally helped thousands of patients overcome severe pain from L5-S1 disc herniations. I will carefully explain each exercise. We'll discuss how to do it properly, safely. We'll discuss how many reps to do, how often to do them, so that way you can get on the path to recovering from your L5-S1 disc bulge or herniation. Before we dive into the exercises, I wanna take a moment and show you the spine so we can point out exactly what structures we're talking about. Here's the spine, of course, and this is the lumbar spine. We have five lumbar vertebrae. L5, L4, L3, L2, L1. These are the discs that separate the block vertebral bodies. Out back, we have paired facet joints. Those are smooth joints. There's a joint covering, and your body produces synovial joint fluid. This is a natural lubricant. You can see the discs are very important. They provide shock absorption. They provide a pivot point for movement, and very important, they serve as a spacer to give space for these nerve roots which exit directly off of the spinal cord. Now this is just a model, but in real world, there's an artery, there's a vein, there's some adipose or fat packing material, so there's not as much space as it would appear when you look at a model. Now this is an example of a herniation or disc bulge at the L3, L4 disc, but the lower you go in the spine, the more likely those discs are to herniate because they are taking more weight from the whole body the lower you go. So this is L5, this is the sacrum. So a disc bulge right here would be your L5-S1 disc bulge or herniation. And you can see how close those nerves can get to the herniated disc. When discs herniate, they produce a lot of inflammation and it's the chemicals of the inflammatory process that produce pain when we're talking about nerve pain. So the exercises we're gonna show you 
gently work on producing some distraction to take pressure off of that herniated disc to facilitate the flow of nutrients into the disc to pump waste products out. The key is how do we do that in a gentle, safe, and effective manner when the person is dealing with a lot of pain. That's why traditional exercise is often weight-bearing. There are no-go because they can cause more pain because of the loading pressure that can occur into the discs. That's why when we get to the last exercise that we're going to show you out of the three, the seated exercise, we're going to do that seated, but in a way where we're going to try to teach you how to create some distraction when you're sitting. Let's jump into those exercises now. Okay, the first exercise is the posterior pelvic tilt. Lying on my back, I have my knees bent, and what you're trying to do is first picture a rod going right through my hips, and on either side of this rod are two big wheels. So picture rolling those wheels back and then rolling those wheels forward. So we're gonna start in a neutral spine so I can feel a little bit of a space underneath my lower back. That's neutral spine position. And then just picture what would happen if I were to roll those wheels back. I'm just rocking the pelvis back. And basically that's creating some distraction in the lower lumbar spine vertebra that can take some pressure off of the discs. So I roll back and we hold for three to five seconds and then release. And again, I roll back I hold three to five seconds and then I release. You want to start out with just 10 repetitions, holding each repetition for three to five seconds and release. If at any time, if this makes your back pain or leg pain worse, we stop. If you can tolerate it or it feels good, then we can add and do a second set of 10 reps. Eventually you want to build, if you can, to three sets of 10 repetitions where we hold each repetition for three to five seconds. We can do that every few hours because it's really more of just a mobility exercise to pump some nutrition in and waste products out of the disc. That's why you can do it more often. The next exercise is a progression. If we can do the posterior pelvic tilts and that feels good, then that tells us flexion is doing good things to that herniated disc. So the next exercise we start by taking one of our knees and then we gently pull that into our chest, towards our chest, and we hold for 30 to 60 seconds. After we do one side, we slowly let that leg go back down. And then you wanna pull the other leg gently towards your chest, hold it here for 30 to 60 seconds. After that, you're gonna rest both legs down. And then if you can, we're gonna bring both knees towards the chest, and then we hold for 30 to 60 seconds. If this feels good, we can add some additional mobility by doing small circles with our knees in one direction. Five to 10 usually is sufficient. And then you can reverse and do five to 10 circles in the other direction. This too is a fairly gentle exercise. So you can do that every few hours as well to provide relief and to pump some nutrition into those disc spaces. This last exercise is a little more complicated, but is very effective if done well. We're gonna start by sitting tall, and then we've gotta find two landmarks. The first landmark is the front of the bony hip. So right about here, this is known as the ASIS. And then I'm gonna basically, we're gonna use the surfer sign right here, hang 10, right? So we're gonna find that bony part of the hip, the ASIS, and I'm gonna put my pinkies right there. And then I wanna find the lowest rib. So for me, that's right about here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take deep breaths in. Each time we breath in, I wanna get as tall as possible. I wanna create some distraction in the spine. How do we know if I were doing that? Well, if I'm palpating one finger on the hip and one finger on the lowest rib, when I breathe in, I should be able to create space. If this, this distance is growing, then I know that I am elongating the spine. So with a deep breath in, we elongate, we hold, and then this is the trick. When I blow air out, I'm gonna purse my lips, make noise when I blow out to be blowing out slowly and smoothly. 
And I'm gonna to try to not let myself collapse back down. In order to do that, I'm gonna to have to fire a lot of very important spinal muscles that keep myself from compressing down. If we're able to do this, we do 10 repetitions at a time. If that feels good, we can take a break and we can do three sets of 10 repetitions. And this is what it looks like. So we're gonna sit up tall. I'm gonna palpate the bony part of my hip. I'm gonna palpate the lowest rib right about here. And I'm gonna take a deep breath in and try to get as tall as possible. Now I'm gonna purse my lips, blow out and not let myself collapse. From here, I'm gonna to try to get even taller. I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna blow out. Try not to compress. One more time. Hold, one, two, three, and then release. One correction, I said 10 repetitions, only do three repetitions, that's a lot. What you'll notice is when you are doing those three repetitions, when you're breathing out slowly and you're not trying to let yourself collapse, you're gonna feel a lot of tension, a lot of tightness, muscles in the abdominal area. You're also gonna feel some spinal stabilizers that you might not be activating much at all. You're gonna feel those muscles turn on. So often it, can, often it can be tense, maybe even some tightness right between my shoulder blades. And that's good because we're waking up spinal muscles, spinal stabilizers that can really help us to hold good posture when we are up and about. So this exercise is very, very important for getting some deep compression while we're sitting. We can train our body to be tall and elongated. So when we are up, we're taking pressure off those herniated discs so they can heal without re-injury. A lot of times when we sit with poor posture, we're really just pounding pressure into those damaged discs. And it's a lot harder to heal when we're putting pressure on them with daily posture. So sitting up tall, palpating hip, palpating lower ribs, we're breathing in. We are holding, not letting ourselves collapse. We only do three repetitions per set, but you can take a break and do three sets of three repetitions. Very effective great progression. Now that you made it to the end, I'm going to show you a bonus exercise. When it comes to healing discs, essentially we want to do as much movement as we can in as many different planes of motion to produce good healthy pumping action on the disc as long as it's well tolerated. Yes, a lot of people do well with flexion. The first two exercises when we're doing posterior pelvic tilts, knees to chest, What's very important that we do is also check to see how we do in extension because extension can milk the disc in a different direction. And some discs behave differently. Some people will feel good with flexion only. Some people feel good with extension only. And often we can do both as long as it's slow and gentle. Now we have to do a test and this is what it looks like. We start laying on our belly. An exercise mat is best. If we're on the bed, we might have too much sinking into the bed, which could extend the back too much. So what we do for a test is I'm just gonna put my hands under my chin. And literally just in this position alone, I'm creating a little bit of extension in the lumbar spine. And the test is, can you sit here for three to five minutes without any pain? If the back feels okay, if the buttocks, if the legs, if we're getting no additional pain or we have some relief after doing a three to five minute test, then we can do very slow, gentle extension exercises. We can put our hands underneath our shoulders and just very gently, we go up to tolerance. For some people, that might be all the extension they can get. Other people might be able to go a little more. And we hold for three to five seconds, and then we slowly rock down. Slowly go up to tolerance, hold three to five seconds, and rest. Now, if that's too difficult, some people might have pain turning the muscles on, but they feel good resting in this position. Well, you can do three to five minutes a few times a day resting just like this. If we think we might do better with a little more extension, I can go fists under my chin. If this feels good, then I might even be able to rest elbows under shoulders. Regardless of whatever position we choose, it's important that we go slow, we never go quickly. And again, none of these exercises should ever make pain worse. We stop 
if we do feel worse. Most of the time you will feel better because we're mobilizing the disc in ways to promote healing, pumping out waste products that are causing pain in the first place. Now, I wanna hear from you. Which of these exercises did you like the most? Which one provided you the most relief? Was it the posterior pelvic tilt? Was it the knee to chest? Was it the sitting with extension elongation? Or perhaps was it the prone extension exercise? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. If you found relief with any of these exercises, please share this video because it could help others that are dealing with pain from an L5-S1 disc bulge or herniation, could also help others with pain that are dealing with an L4 or L5 disc herniation or bulge. Also, the more you share this video, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm and therefore it could help more people by getting the word out. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can improve your posture, improve your spinal health to feel better, to move better, to perform better, and to have overall better health. The next video you should watch is right here. If you watch this video, you will learn how to fix an L5-S1 disc bulge or herniation without surgery. Go ahead and watch this video now.